This here is a tool used by red teamers and blue teamers called Red Eye. It's developed by the US government and we actually just found a bug live on stream using CodeQL. We figured out that one GraphQL resolver was lacking authorization checks and we were able to just query all the global operators um, and leak them without yeah, requiring authentication. Here is the CodeQL query that we used. I, I'm trying to record a little bit of an intro for YouTube. Sorry if this is a bit awkward now. I have not used CodeQL before, but it's an interesting way to discover vulnerabilities across code bases or maybe even, you know, identify code within one large code base by writing queries and kind of like asking um, about certain conditions that are kind of like vulnerabilities, right? CodeQL is from GitHub and I've not used it before. Here's a little bit of a, an example of a example CodeQL query. I have no clue. It's, you know, I don't know, you use here. I don't know, I don't know how it works, okay? That's what I'm here for. I try to see if I can get a basic example um, going. So we wanna look into CodeQL um, and use it. But on what do we use it? There's a reason actually why I wanna um, look into it because right now I'm on a project like for work. I cannot show you uh, what the project is, of course. In there I have a bit larger code base. It's a Node.js server using Apollo GraphQL. It's super annoying to test and I, I got a bit lazy. And so instead of doing stuff manually, I was hoping, you know what? I could create a stream where I finally, finally sit down and look at CodeQL and see if it can help me in this particular case. There's one particular research question I had, which I can do by hand, but uh, hopefully with code, learning CodeQL, it's something that just uh, easily, easily works. And the specific research question I have is that um, GraphQL obviously also has, author you, you have to somehow implement authorization checks or authentication checks, like some API endpoints um, are only available for the admin, some are only uh, if you have an account, some are you know bound to some organization or some other kind of access control, you know, maybe there are different levels of administrator and supports and stuff like this. So, so there's a lot of uh, these kind of authorization checks, right? And so I was using grep.app to look for re public repositories that kind of implement the same. L look how I searched for this. I typed in add authorized for the decorator and then I looked at path where resolver is in the name. That's a typical naming scheme how um, Node.js apps uh, with GraphQL uh, name their files, right? Resolver, TypeScript, annotation resolvers, campaign resolvers. So I knew a resolver like in the name is probably then a GraphQL resolver and then looking for the particular um, decorator and we've actually found, um, I think two great examples. One of these example is a free code camp chapter. It's like a meet up group planning tool or something. So that's definitely a good example. And then I, I realized there's CI, CISA government red eye. And I was like clicking on it. What the heck is that? So apparently red eye is a visual analytic tool supporting red and blue team operations. And here's a screenshot of it. Command and control log visualizer, cobalt strike server, and then lateral beacon. And then somehow like, I don't know, doing like some red teaming stuff or so. No clue what this tool is for. Okay, I'm not into red teaming and pen testing, that kind of stuff. Like no clue if this is a useful tool, but you can see it's a website. It apparently uses GraphQL. Here's the file, for example, here's the resolver. And if you look for add authorized, you can see here, for example, the add authorized modifier being used. Uh, I guess I should maybe check if it's using Apollo. Yeah, Apollo server, it's using Apollo server express. So here's, here's the research question, okay? Why do I wanna use CodeQL? Well, there are different ways to test for access control issues, right? But we have here the source code. And it would be very helpful for me to very quickly run a query that figures out all GraphQL resolvers that do not have, for example, the authorization check. This is a research question I have. I can even do it by hand, like that's what I would be doing by hand, okay? There are just a, a limited amount of resolver files, okay? There are like is a dozen or so, maybe, maybe 20 or I don't know how many these are. 
not that many, right? I can I can do this by hand. I can open this one and then I can go through quickly. Okay, this has it, has it, has it, has it, has it, has it, has it. Let's go out. Next one. Um, has it, has it, has it, has it, has it, right? But I'm looking for one where they are maybe for where they forgot it. With that, it could be a bug. It doesn't have to be a bug, right? There are op often also resolvers that where you don't need to be authorized because it carries some public information or so. It feels like if I could learn a, some basic code QL, maybe I, it's very easy for me. Give me all resolvers where there is no authorization check. And then I can go over the few that I found uh, to uh, to see logically if there is a bug or not. You know, is this meant to be public or is this was this forgotten? Of course, I could also do it with regex. You know, it's very easy to find all the ones that have authorized, right? I can just literally search for everything authorized, just grab over it and I find all of them. There's also maybe, you know, I could quickly write a little bit of a, like a negative regex, find everything where there's query and not authorized before it. But then sometimes there are multiple decorators and like it, it gets a bit messy pretty quickly, right? The cool thing is if I could use code quail and ask for find me all classes where there's resolver in the name, for example, or where there's like this query decorator and f check if there are other decorators. That's at least that's how I imagine code QL works. I'm actually not sure if that's what I can do with it, but that's the goal. So I was thinking, you know, let's take this uh, red eye uh, CSI, no, it's not CSI, CISA government uh, thing. And let's try to use uh, CodeQL on that. I don't know how powerful CodeQL is. In my mind, I just hope I can just query, you know, it, it's a, as long as this language supported, it can, I don't know, I don't know how it works. Okay, we'll figure it out. If it could be, very well be, that in 30 minutes, I realize it doesn't work, it does not work. Okay, so here's the link of supported uh, frameworks. C++, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript. So yeah, seems fine, right? Standard languages. Frameworks may be important, it's below. So with these query languages, I don't know much about this, okay? I might speak bullshit here. As far as I understand, querying, you know, having huge graphs and query them is kind of, a kind of a difficult like computational task and it can quickly explode having to um, keep track, you know, store like all the routes and stuff like this. So what you can do is if there is a popular framework or library, I believe you can pre annotate these things and you can say, okay, this framework function or library function is dangerous or something. And then you don't need to traverse into the complicated library function at all because you know if, if that is used, then that's a problem. And so it's a lot more efficient than to uh, run your code on your own stuff. That's what I assume what, what is doing it, but uh, I'm not sure, of course. I, I have a friend who is working at a company who if he would see that I'm testing out code, uh, code QL, he's working at uh, shift left and they have their tool called yearn bug hunters workbench, which is an open source code analysis platform for C++. Oh, it also has JavaScript based on code property graph. So it's similar and he hates code QL and he says code QL is shit and yearn is better. I know also the person kind of like who invented yearn behind it, Fabian Yamaguchi. Uh, he's a very, I, it's a research I very much respect, very much look up to. Uh, always loved uh, listening to his talks. Um, so he, th they are coming out of the, you know, hacker community, the German hacker community, but I've never looked into it. Okay. So maybe, maybe this is another thing we, I, I should look at at some point. Okay. I'm kind of cheating on my friend right now. Yarn run start. Okay. Let's see if we can get that run really quick. So we set up a red eye. We were, we are able to run it. There's like an interface now with uh, server password dev. I wonder if there's like a default password. It's not that important. Actually, we, you know, we don't really care about the project itself. You will want to grab the VS code code QL extension that lets you query and explore and ask T makes writing queries much easier. That is great advice. So let's keep that in mind. I guess I first look up code QL basics in the document in the docs, just getting started or something. And then code QL for Visual Studio code, I guess here are the recommendation also to, to maybe get that going. But let's see um, how we can 
get that set up. This is always the tricky thing with documentations, right? I don't want to read everything. Maybe I should read everything because if I look over stuff, I, I run into issues later. Cocure for Visual Studio is an extension that lets you write and run test Cocure queries in Visual Studio. Go to the Visual Studio Marketplace and click install. Okay, we are installing CodeQL. Install extensions. CodeQL, I guess this one here. Hopefully it tells us that something is missing or so, like, like the binary maybe itself is missing, then we can uh, download that. Configure access to the CodeQL CLI. The extension uses CodeQL CLI to compile and run queries. If you already have the CLI installed and add, add it to your path, the extension uses that version. This might be the case if you create your own CodeQL database instead of downloading them from github.com. Otherwise, the extension automatically manages access to the executable of the CLI for you. This ensures the CLI is compatible with the CodeQL extension. Note, the extension managed CLI is not accessible from the terminal. If you intend to use CLI outside of the extension, we recommend that you install your own copy of the CLI to avoid having two copies. When you're working with CodeQL, you need access to the standard CodeQL libraries. This also makes a wide variety of queries available to explore. There are two ways to do this. Recommended use the starter workspace. This is maintained as a Git repository, which makes it easier to keep up to date with changes to libraries. More advanced, add the CodeQL libraries and queries to an existing workspace. The starter workspace is a Git repository. It contains the repository of CodeQL libraries and queries for all supported languages. This is included as a submodule, so it can be updated. A series of folders named blah, blah. To use the starter workspace, clone the repository. I mean, for my case, I mean, it's good if we can use existing queries to also query the code base. It's pr probably interesting. Not so sure if it's super necessary for me trying to write my own query, but uh, either way, I guess it's fine if we follow the setup and make sure then everything works and stuff. I tried using CodeQL once a while ago and kind of immediately abandoned it because I thought I can just write a query and get some answers. What is all this bullshit with creating a database and so forth, right? So like I was immediately turned off by it, but let's give it another chance. Okay, let's create a new window. File, open, workspace, projects. There's the workspace, okay. Analyzing your projects. You can run queries on CodeQL databases and view the results in Visual Studio Code. To analyze a project, you need to add CodeQL database for that project. Open CodeQL database view in the sidebar. Okay, so I assume I go now to my project here, to RedEye, and then what do I do? CodeQL databases view sidebar. I have a new sidebar. Does CodeQL extensions by GitHub have your permission to collect usage data and metrics no. Add your database. You can add a database from a local zip archive or a folder from a public URL. What the fuck is it? What what is the database now? Is is the is the Git repository that I downloaded? Is that um is that a database? The starter thing is that a database? Custom queries for JavaScript is this a database? A database is a directory containing queryable data extracted from the code. But I have no code extracted. I don't have a database yet. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Here, obtaining a local database, okay? To create a database with the code CLI, use creating CodeQL database. Before you analyze your code using CodeQL, you need to create a CodeQL QL database containing all the data required to run queries on your code. You can create CodeQL database yourself using the CodeQL CLI. CodeQL analysis, analysis relies on extracting relational data from your code. Install and set up CodeQL CLI. Okay, now we follow this. Okay, so here we find Linux, 400 megabytes. I wanna use CodeQL Workshop, but it told me I should do this. What do I need to do? What is CodeQL Workshop? But that's a university workshop. I don't understand. Why do I need that? Why, why do I want the workshop? I don't wanna do this example. We have our own example. Maybe it would have been better to use a workshop, but, but I'm stubborn now on my example. Okay, and then we have here this folder. Like we extract that there and there's a binary. Okay, cool. Maybe there's a setting code QL. No, um, set extension settings, executable path. So here we can also just like code specify code QL. So we take this now, we go in our red eye project and then we now apparently learn how to run you can download some CodeQL packs by running CodeQL pack download, launch CodeQL, verify CodeQL setup, resolve QL packs, run CodeQL resolve languages to show which languages are available. This will list the language supported by default. 
run code curl resolve QL packs to show which code curl packs the CLI can find. This will display the name of. Okay, what is the difference between QL packs and languages now? Query packs for each supported language, for example, codeql slash language queries. These packs contain standard queries. Okay, the the repository we don't we got earlier, the starter, the codeql starter thing, these are these QL packs or what what is that? Language are core packs, QL packs are built in queries. Okay, thank you. Then I guess somehow we can tell it that these I mean, there are not no queries there. Okay, I don't, I don't know how this. Okay, it's all weird. CodeQL database create path to the new database to be created. This directory will be created when you execute the command. You cannot specify an existing directory. Okay, best practices. Where do you create this now? Is this do you create this just in the root of your file project or do you um, put it somewhere else? I guess you put it somewhere else, right? Uh, so in here we would do create and then maybe. Maybe we create like uh, databases, whatever. Database create, and we say databases, and we call it red eye. Maybe red eye one because maybe we, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe you want to update later red eye and create a new database for it and not overwrite your current, or I don't know, I don't know. It's just my guess. And then language identifier, and then we can specify the source root. Now let's look at the project that we have here. So if you look at our code here, I guess we are mostly interested in the server. So I guess we can specify applications server as the source root because the client we don't care about. So we add source root equal to, uh, what was it? Application server. And I guess maybe in here it's fine because I don't know, maybe maybe it wants, it can learn something from these modules or so. I don't know. So now you can see here the full command that I entered. Code QL database create, where we want to create the database in, language JavaScript, and as a root, we want to select the, the server. Everybody, look, look, look at me, look. That flew. It's not Club Mate, it's uh, Spitzi. As German as it can be, yeah. Let's look a little bit at the output here just to understand, to get a bit of an idea of what is happening here. So I initialized the database there. It found Node.js. It found the Node.js version. It looked at the package JSON. This is interesting to me. I want to see, like, it, it's interesting to me to know that uh, CodeQL uses that information, right? It also found apparently a TS that it uses the TS config JSON file. So it also looked at this, at this here. So that, that that's all quite interesting, of course. And then it starts going through these files, apparently. <sighs> all these utils files, done extracting, done extracting. Okay, and it ran, it ran, it ran, it ran. And then finalizing database, successfully created database. Let's have a quick look just to get a feeling for how this database looks like. So here's our database folders with red eye. And there's like, there's logs, db javascript, there's a db scheme, schema stats, default, checksum. Okay, this is, I guess, the, the actual database symbols, signatures, checksums, I don't know. Okay, this is then the weird database format. Okay. Good to know. Great. Which means now we can go here in the code QL and now we can say from a folder. So now we can open this database. We go to Red Eye, we open, we choose this as our database. This workspace contains a TypeScript version. Would you like to use the loading database? Okay, I don't, I, I don't know. Okay, so we have here a database. Okay, now we can come back to, to the explanation here. Okay, so we selected a database, running a query. The code QL repository in GoodTab contains a lot of example queries. Is this the one that we cloned? No, it's uh, something else. If you have a folder or a different QL code pack available in your workspace, you can access existing queries under open a query file, it displayed in the editor. Here is, I guess, where we go back and not, not run this in here, but we use it in the code QL starter workspace, right? Because it's set up like a basic, this is an empty block, like a basic query there. That's why we wanna run this in here, I assume. And we have here some already some queries in there, I guess. Okay, so let's set up the, the let's open the database in, in here. Databases, red eye, choose, okay. 
Okay, so we have it in here. And now you say add database source to workspace. Does that just mean, yeah, okay, it shows up project. Okay, that's just the source archive. Okay, that's not that important, right? Open a query QL file. It is displayed in the editor with IntelliSense features such as syntax highlighting and autocomplete suggestion. Okay, so we select now one, we go like Java, or can we down here? Is there like JavaScript? Extractor? No, what, what, what does that mean? Is that something else? Do, do I want to look at this? No, this is like weird. Go back. That, that was scary. Whew. This is a QL file. And now I can go here and say run query. And now it runs the example QL on red eye. We, we ran the query now. And apparently we found a lot of empty blocks. So what does this what does this mean? From block statement B, where the statements inside that block is zero, it's an empty block. And now it shows us some source code where that is the case. So apparently there is an empty block. Oh, it's an empty catch. It's an empty, it's empty block here. And then I guess we have a lot of, uh, where's this code? Line six. So this is also considered empty. I mean, this is kind of like, I guess, uh, it, I guess it's empty because it's just a type definition or something. It's just, yeah, it's just a sort, so it doesn't have really code inside of it or something. That's why it's considered empty, maybe. I don't know, but I mean, empty block, I don't know how important that is. It's just an example, right? But interesting that this this resolver is also considered an empty block. I mean, because there is an async function inside of it. So why is the, oh, in 29. Yeah, so that is that whole thing here. Why is that considered an empty block? Use the AST Explorer. Okay, that's a good point. Run the command on an open source file from a code QL database. Okay, so we have this open now and we want to understand why this is an empty block, right? So I click view AST. Cannot view the AST, please select a valid source file inside the code QL database. Or is this only for the for the query itself? So click the TS file and view AST. Click the TS file and view AST. Oh, maybe I was focused on the wrong window, right? Maybe I was in a query result window or something. And when I press view AST, it tried to view the AST of this opened file. While, yeah, and it didn't have this in focus. Now it works. Yeah. Okay, so we have an import declaration, import declaration, import, import, import. Ah, that's pretty cool. Can I also, oh, nice. When I hover over it, I see the, it, the AST viewer also updates. Uh, in case you don't know, AST stands for abstract syntax tree. So the syntax, the language here, when like the compiler also wants to understand this code to build like whatever executed or whatever, uh, you basically put the, this whole code you can imagine as like a big tree. Like in this file, there are now multiple lines and that's, you see them. And for example, this individual import declaration, we can look into inside of it, you see this inside of it is this link label. Right, so so this is like the tree. So this import statement and inside of it is this link. And very similar down here, this class link resolver, inside of it, uh, you can now find, uh, you know, additional things. So so code is like this tree, right, nested. Um, yeah, it, so it's, it's not only the nested uh, functions, but it's like, it goes into detail, like every little statement, like every little thing has an explanation what it is. Um, and yeah, so this is really like the, the representation of this code, basically. We were looking for empty blocks and it found on line 29 an empty block. And I wonder how we can figure this out now. Because line 29 doesn't like immediately show up here, but it was like, so here, uh, this is the links resolver. Here the, on line 29, apparently like here, Oh, no, 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 sorry, line nine. Sorry, sorry, Mis mislooked. Okay, so apparently here it found like an empty block, uh, but I don't know, like, how could we understand this now? Because obviously, according to AST, it's not empty. However, maybe it's an empty block. I don't know what, what, so, so here's maybe we can look at the example query again. The query is here, the number of statements. Let's see, if we go in here, like, yeah, yeah, look here. So this here is a block statement. It's a complete 
code statement. It's a block statement. I don't know. Like um, I don't I don't know the exact definitions of these things, right? But it it kind of makes sense that this is like a block with a lot of statements inside, I guess. There's a declaration statement where it declares this variable. There's a return statement. And inside of it, I'm sure we can find like a method call expression. Yeah, I don't know. So, so these are individual statements. And inside of links, so, so this function expression is not empty because it contains statements. But the links resolver, if you look at that, this whole thing here only contains a class definition, like directly, only a class definition and type definition. Um, because we define here a, a class, right? So there's no there's no statement inside of it. We only have a class definition and a type definition. And inside of it, sure, there's 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 it it then defines here something that has a statement, but directly itself, it has no statements. And that's I guess why when we write a query like this. We look at all the block statements, and if there's a block statement that has no statements inside of it, then it's an empty block. That's my interpretation of this code, at least. It's not get num statement equal equal zero. This is not JavaScript. This is code QL. This is the query language. Uh, so this is more like SQL, right? Like select the, the from where. Or yeah, or kind of the reverse. I don't know. It's code QL. We we gotta learn a new language here. So my goal for today, I want to try to learn how to use code QL to write a query that finds all resolvers and checks and and gives me all the resolvers that do not have the authorized or or like our queries whatever uh, that do not have the authorized decorator. So that's the goal. So here we have a resolver. Maybe we can already learn from this. I want to look at all functions that have the query um, decorator. That's probably a good way to do it. I want to find all functions that have query and then check if it does not have the authorized decorator. That's kind of like what I want to find out. So if we look in here, I guess we want to have the AST thing. We can see here decorator. So there's probably a query, right, where we can look for all query decorators, and then we can probably like look like for zip zip links. What are the other decorators there, right? Is that is that a kind of query we can write? So let's create a new file that we save maybe decorator.ql save, and then I like import JavaScript. Could not resolve module. Do I need a QL pack file? So I guess I also need to I need I need to create this right a QL pack file and put that into the into the same folder. I would write your query in the workshop folder. What is the workshop folder? Also, what happens if there's a decorator that calls authorize itself? You mean a more complex upper um, like if there's another um, decorator that's called staff only and I only account for authorize right now while staff only also does it. Well, that depends on the code base. You know, different code bases use different uh, functions. This is, yeah, it has to then be adjusted based on, like if we would run this and see, oh, all the stuff that have the authorized missing have staff only, then we add, okay, we also don't care about staff only. After we reviewed how the authorization check or uh, staff check is done, if we consider it safe or something, you know? It's, 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 it's details. Let's first even find all those uh, decorators. The code QL custom JavaScript query folder. Okay, but I want to have like my own query. Okay, wait, maybe I just copy this, right? Maybe that's that's the way to do it. Copy the JavaScript example and I call it GraphQL decorator. Why is it not in here? Oh my God, I hate, I hate computers. It's not worth it to fight with code QL to get a custom folder. Oh my gosh, I, I see already this is terrible. This is all pretty awful. Okay, okay. We we don't now now we have our own folder, okay? And we don't get errors in here. So so the setup here seems to work. We can rename this now to also graph QL decorator. How do I know now how the syntax works? We know from the AST that there's a decorator. Can can I can I do like from dec Decorator, huh? D select D test. Okay, so if I run this, should I get every decorator ever? My my run craft button is gone. 
How do I run a GraphQL query now? Okay, CodeQL run query. Cool, we find all decorators, nice. So now I can do where the decorator, I, I'm, I'm now looking for all query decorators, okay? I, I want, I only want the query decorators. How can I filter for this now? Get token, get parent, get type, get type maybe. Okay, wait, let, let's print out all types. Is this, is this the way to do it, how I do it right now? Or is there an easier way to like explore and slowly build your query? Or, or is this like the intended way to always now run the query and see, like get a bit of debug output? I feel like with big source code, it would get very slow to do this. Uh, it, I, already, I guess it's like super slow. Now it does amazing caching. Okay, but now I have zero results. Why would, why, why does this give me results? But when I want to see the, the type of it, this then fails. Get type is probably not the, because it gives us back the type. So it's probably type decorator or something. Maybe it doesn't have a type. That's why it doesn't select anything or I don't know. AST no string. Get a primary QL class. Get, get a successor as a control flow, a token, a basic block, AST node. So get type, what did that return? Get kind is an integer. Hmm, this is so weird. What, what, what did it find now? Why does why do I not get now where it found it? Select D. This is this is this represents the so I need to do select D and then maybe get kind. Yeah, okay. Now we have now we see here all of them. We could click on them and it brings us there. Okay, now I understand this like automatically. So then test and then D is like 94. Okay, no idea what yeah, get but get type. This, th there's also invalid result patterns. Show log, I, it just doesn't like, okay. Could not process any query metadata. Expect alternating entity string and string columns. No clue what that means. Yeah, select is the output, I understand. I wanna get the type or or like the name of it. Get name, but but it's, it's not, but maybe get token or something. Like what represents the name? Uh, get element, get container. Get expression. I guess I want the, the actual name of the decorator. Let's see if JetGPT knows this. Maybe, maybe, you know. Write a code query for JavaScript. Find all decorators with the name query. Okay, it says there's get name, but there's no get name. Or at least here it says cannot be resolved. Get expression. Expression also, ex expression doesn't have. Uh, get name, basic block, uh, cannot resolve for type basic block. Okay, so maybe, okay, maybe does the AST help us? So if I have a decorator here, but but as you can see, like in the AST, there's the decorator and it has like right here, like this name. Oh, maybe call expression. And then the var reference is query. So can we go, go like uh, somehow find the call expression and then var reference or something? So uh, get call, no, get expression, and then var get string value. How can you debug queries? Just get the expression, don't get the string value. Oh, okay, this looks good. But but how can I just output like if I want the string value because I want to write, you know, how can I so where d dot get expression equal to uh, query. This will not work, right? Because what, what the fuck is query? It's, it's like not a known type. And equal to string doesn't work because expression is obviously not a string. How do I now know if the string value is really like looking like this? See, at query or is it query now, you know? Like, yeah, look at these ex ex expl explanations gets the expression of this decorator. For example, the decorator at A has expression A and at testable true has the expression testable true. Name, no, get string value. So what is the string value? Gets the constant string value this expression evaluates to. This of course is not what we want. It determines the TypeScript type. Why is this causing an error? I guess because the expression is not correct. So if we do get this, if we try to get the type of that, oh, there, there exists two string on it. 
Ah, okay. Now this output was interesting. Method decorator, method and prop decorator. Okay, but not quite what you want. Okay. So you say get expression to string. Oh, there's a to string. Okay. I also don't understand what this, like, what is this output, by the way? I said D and then the string. Why is it now the other way around? Why is it now a message? Why is it not no table? I don't understand this automatic parsing. I don't want this. Can can I make this can I make this like a proper table because I have like two values that I return here? Ah, okay, here. Okay, and then we can maybe contains index of. Is that is that ugly? Is that not how we should write it? Because of course we can do like I guess index of not minus one. Now we should only find queries, right? Is this ugly? Are you judging me? Nice. Now we find all the queries. Cool. Here's a query. Here's a query. Nice. And then we want to end d dot get sibling get. I guess we can get go to the parent. And now we want to like somehow say contains. How can I now say uh, say does not contain a decorator child with authorization? It would be good to know like how can I now query children? I think now it's time to look at some example code QL queries. Okay, wait, no, um, let, let's ask, uh, well, you know, the syntax was not quite right with uh, JetGPT, uh, generally, okay. Extend the query with another where clause where the parent contains no child with decorator name authorization. Okay, here it looks for methods that con ah with contain D. That's interesting. How can I now look through all children? Maybe children only works on methods. Check all sibling decorators to not have the name authorization. Maybe this helps. It's very academic. See what I mean? Yeah, sure. I mean, I just have to wrap my head around like this query syntax or so. We could also, it's, it's like an interesting query still, like find all queries that have authorization. D1 index of query and D2 index authorize. And then show me the query. We are just playing, right? We are just learning. So this is a fine, small learning. Query. Oh no no this this is wrong, and and d one dot get parent is equal to d two dot get parent. This is of course like this. Okay, so here we should get all the queries that are authorized. That's pretty cool already. But how can I check for this? Like the this is like a very weird inverse. Like you know, but this was already helpful. This is still like kind of helpful. We want one decorator again, and then get parent dot get a child star. Is this a special like syntax with star? Why are query languages like this? Why is it so much? Why are they like this? And why can I not say? How can I make subqueries? If I could like make a subquery, I could like get all. I could find all queries, or like I could find all you know, parents of decorators that contain authorize. Because like if I if I can query all of them that have authorized and then I then I do like where it's not in that subquery. Can I can I do that? Can I create a subquery and check if one element is in this subquery? Why where did it pull this query from where it looks for users? that are at least 18 years old. What the fuck is this kind of query? I feel like, does it does it not feel like, maybe, maybe it's wrong because this feels like it's mixing SQL because now this is select from where. Maybe it looks like a regular SQL query because this is a SQL query and JetGPT just made, the, like try to bullshit its way. This is wrong, I haven't seen this. Yeah, yeah, I assume so too. I assume, I think CodeQL just dreamed up because I assumed like it exists and it just tried to, if you wanna learn bullshitting in interviews, chat, have a little bit of chat with CodeQL. It's, a, it's amazing at bullshitting. Then I guess let's do the traditional Google code search. CodeQL subqueries. 
Oh, I, I'm just here. Look here. There are different queries and you can have an alert query, a path query, diagnostic query for troubleshooting and as a summary. And if we look in our code, we see here it's kind problem. So if we change this to diagnostic, then that's more like what we want, right? We want to run a diagnostic query. Okay, zero results. Great. And then problems, we, we don't have a problem, so I can remove that, I guess. Why is it defaulting to alert still? I would have hoped that by removing that, it wouldn't go there. Anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. Your suggestion, this here, no results. But, I mean, this is already uh, pretty good, right? We can maybe use this to modify our code here. The one dot get parent dot get a child only the decorator for of type decorator index of authorize minus one is not authorized okay let's see okay we find three queries and they don't have authorize nice interesting look what we found here so apparently there is a progress resolver showing you the progress of a task the thing is just i'm broken so this is apparently broken code like you can't get the pro pausing progress anymore or something it's it's probably not used anymore maybe replaced with this quite interesting so so it's not useful for security i guess if they write here i'm broken and then the other net what, what is this here so this is operator resolver operator sounds pretty serious Oh, we should for queries, we should look for queries or mutations. And this is, I guess, like this research process, right? Like that, what, what I was hoping for, that you can then adapt it a little bit and run another query. So actually, that's before we move on, let's extend our query. So we look for queries or mutations, and then we run this query. Why did we not find the mutation here? View AST. So in here, we ha have a decorator mutation. So yeah, we, we should find it as well. Mutation. Go through all decorators and we check if their two string is either query or mutation. Where the parent, we check all the children decorators and none of them should be index of authorized. So none of them should have authorized in there. Is it? It matched the first condition of the or and stopped. But this is a separate decorator, right? So here this decorator has no query. It, it, it matched two decorator, uh, two queries in the same file. So it matched these two queries perfectly. So why would it match these individual queries, this decorator and this decorator, but not match this decorator? It's an or, so if this does not match, it has to check if this is true. You changed your query and you find four now. Oh, you are looking also. Does anybody know why this doesn't work? Like, I want to understand this. Uh, we, I know we can maybe test your query, but yeah, remove the not check and see if it um, if it matches uh, mutation. You're right. We should do that. Query, query, query. It only matches queries. And if I switch this around. It still only found queries. Now look only for mutation. It doesn't find any mutation. Why not? So if you look in the AST, it is a decorator. It's considered a decorator. But maybe get like two string. It, it's not called mutation. Is this the issue? Because the two string uh, does this. I guess this is the issue because the two string makes like this weird string out of it, this cuck, this con this shorter string. So this is bad. This is not something we should do, this two string. So maybe Geek Mesher used a different way of getting these names. So you used get callie name. Call you use this on call expression, but this is the this is the child. That um, the call expression would be the child. So this this would still okay. If we then get all child expressions, maybe th this is good enough. And then get call child expression and we want to get all call expressions. Get call name in and then we can have a list of uh, mutation and query. 
Okay, that worked. We found now all mutation and queries. Thank Geek Measure. That was uh, your your query was helpful to learn about that. So now we have this and not we go to the parent, get all the decorated children, and check their expressions are of like the, those are like the blacklist. Okay, now we find four uh, results like Geek Measure mentioned uh, with their query. So we find this one mutation now as well. That is of course an interesting, that is of course, that might be a bug. Like my first impression, like we need to look now a bit closer, but apparently operators, if there are no other ways of ensuring this, it appears to be that you can list as well as cr create global operators. Let's click around really quick on here if you see something about like operators. So we create a test campaign, select a campaign folder with multiple Cobalt Strike server folders. Okay, seems like we cannot use it without, I don't know, show an example, browse. Is there an example? Would be cool to have some example data to pull in there. Query campaigns. Okay, so there's a cookie. If we remove that cookie and try GraphQL, we get access denied. If we now try to query something else, uh, no, wait, campaign, is, that's a query name. Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an expert, I, I know this. Okay, this is the uh, query name test and we query campaigns, type name campaigns or something, I don't know, whatever. Okay, and if we try now here something else, we should get an error, this query does not exist. Okay, cool. So now what we, figured out kind of is that there's these operator resolvers and I guess, uh, so, so how does this work? I'm not a graph ex expert, okay? So resolver operator campaigns, like if you do operators, okay, field operators argument campaign ID is required but was not provided. Operators, okay, this didn't require any arguments. What is this? Global operators. It's the function name here, right? So this should work. Yeah, okay. We query global operators. Let's remove the cookie and see what happens. We can still call it without the, without the cookie. I, I, but I don't know, like maybe global operators is meant to be called, you know, without. So maybe let's try the, the mutation. I forgot how to do mutations. Um, oh, we cannot filter, I, oh my God. Okay, wait, um, how does a graph trail mutation look like again? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, this is a GraphQL resolver. Write the GraphQL mutation query to create a new operator. Create the complete post request. Okay, let's test it. Create global operator test cannot query field username, did you mean name? Apparently we created now a global operator John Doe, we can, let's query. We created a John Doe! Holy shit, Graph uh, JetGPT coming in from the side again. <laughs> Amazing, cool, we found a bug. Should we, should we create, so did, that, that, does this now show up here in the operators or something? Like no clue what this did, no clue. I have no clue where this shows up now. Does it show up in the UI? No, I, like it's it's maybe it's maybe old code, forgotten code. It maybe it has no value whatsoever. Uh, like it, it's a super low bug. Okay, like th this is not critical. If it's something it would be something critical, maybe we should be more concerned showing it on stream or something. But I really don't like. You can argue with me, but this is like a lame bug. Okay, it is a bug, and it's cool that we found it. I think it, it, it's technically a valid um, access control bug, but. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't even show up here in the UI. You know, maybe it would have been interesting maybe for like XSS issues, you know, to escalate further would be cool. Uh, let me quickly re just report this. And then I think I will actually call it operator resolvers missing authorized decorator. The operator resolvers are missing authorized decorators, which allows anybody to query operator names without authentication. Uh, to reproduce and this post request to the GraphQL endpoint. The response will leak the reg registered operator names, example response. The mutation also is lacking the authorized decorator, thus allowing creating global operators without authentication. To fix this, simply add the authorized decorator to all queries. 
background info. Uh, we created this code curl query. This here is a tool used by red teamers and blue teamers called Red Eye. It's developed by the US government and we actually just found a bug live on stream using CodeQL. Um, we figured out that one GraphQL resolver was lacking authorization checks and we were able to just query all the global operators um, and leak them without yeah, requiring authentication. Here is the code QL query that we used. Clip it and ship it. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. That was very educational. I think we learned a lot. It couldn't have gone better that we test out code QL and we find a valid bug. Of course, this is a very, it's, it's, not, it's not an important bug, okay? It's nothing crazy, okay? But it is technically an authentication bug, an uh, access control, ACL bug, whatever you wanna call it, okay? And that is, that is pretty cool.